Hello, my name is Leah Follett, and today I will be talking to you about how my team and I explored the factor structure of the screen for adult anxiety and related disorders, or as I call it, the adult scared. A little bit about me. Um, as of 2022, I'm a research assistant at Harvard University. Additionally, in my free time, I work as a research coordinator for a nonprofit focus on the dissemination of psychological science called, aptly, Helping Give Away Psychological Science. It was H. Gaps with whom I did this project. So what are our main objectives for this project? We want to understand why it's important to use evidence-based assessment across the lifespan, specifically as it relates to anxiety. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about exploratory structural equation models and bifactor models. And lastly, what we'll be spending the bulk of our time on is trying to evaluate the factor structure of the adult scared using our data. So, as some background, there are very few families of anxiety disorders that ask similar questions across the child and adult populations. The adult scared was actually created to address this need, as a child scared is one of the most widely used child anxiety scales to date. Asking similar questions is important because it allows more valid tracking of symptoms. Asking slightly different questions may get you slightly different answers, no shock there. Asking similar questions will control for that potential source of error. As a side note, both the adult scared and the child scared can be used within the EBA framework. So why is it important to compare child and anxiety scores? Really, it mostly boils down to accurate tracking of, accurately tracking the progress of a patient or participant's psychological symptoms. This can be useful in a number of different settings, some of which are more clinical focused, such as tracking a patient's progress as they move from being a teenager to a young adult, or research focus, such as in longitudinal studies. So now we actually get to the factor structure part of the presentation. While the scared is well established and widely used, the only study done on the English translations factor structure <laughs> used principal components analysis. Factor analytic methods, um, specifically more confirmatory factor analytic methods, allow us to explore the uniqueness of each measured item as well as the communality between items. This study aims to explore the factor structure further using more confirmatory methods. So as suggested by multiple experts, we ran a few exploratory uh, analyses followed by a series of competing models. To our knowledge, this is actually the first application of many of these models to the adult scared. Some brief details about the scared, it's 44 items long and it basically runs down the symptoms listed in the DSM-5 anxiety disorder section. Past literature has found four subscales for the measure and later in the talk we'll be giving you access to the measure if you would like to use it in the future. Here's a look at our demographic information as well as our sampling procedure. And here's a more detailed look at our statistical plan. We'll first start by running a screw plot and parallel analysis using n factors in R. Then we'll move on to an unrotated exploratory factor analysis using EFA tools, also in R. It should be noticed that we noted that we also ran several other EFA models, but given how many models are already being included in this presentation, we avoided putting them in these slides. They will be included in the hopefully forthcoming paper though. Next, we ran a CFA and bifactor CFA, both using Lebon and R. And lastly, we ran two ESMs, a first order ESM and a bifactor ESM. These were done using M plus and the code was generated with the help of an open science tool created by De Beer and Van Ziel. So let's get to it. As you can see here, the screen plot shows five eigenvalues, which threw us for a real loop because we were expecting four. And you can see here that our unrotated exploratory factor analysis, um, as I want to point out how many of the items load onto factor one pretty heavily. Okay, for this model, we went with the literature derived model and we allow the subscales to co-vary given the high comorbidity of anxiety disorders. We did not allow cross loadings for this one. And now the bit statistics. 
Notice how the fit statistics aren't fantastic here. Our team used the conventional cutoff points, so less than 0 0.07 for the RMSCA and greater than 0 0.90 for the CFI and TLI. It passes the RMSCA, but we'd really prefer to see, sorry, we'd really prefer to see it below 0 0.05. The CFI and TLI aren't where we want them to be though. Overall, we would categorize this model as having a poor fit. Now for this model, we also allowed cross loadings. So the model is still literature derived and we still allow the subscales to co-vary, but now items aren't only allowed to load onto their specified item. In other words, they are allowed to cross load. The fit statistics for this model are better, but still not where we want to see them. The RMSCA is looking amazing, but the CFI and TLI are still below where we want them to be at. Again, overall, we categorize this as a poor fitting model. Now we're starting to get into the bifactor models. So for this one, we're going back to a CFA approach. In other words, we're not allowing cross-loading. I also want to note that we're not allowing the subscales to covary either. We're hoping that all of that covariance can be explained by the general anxiety factor that we added in there. Now let's take a look at the fit statistics. Again, we're seeing an acceptable RMSCA, but the CFI and TLI are still just not where we want to see them. Alas, again, we still have to say that this model has a poor fit. And now we're taking a look at our last model for the day, the bifactor ESUM. This one is just like the bifactor CFA, except we are allowing cross loadings in this model. And our fit statistics get so close to all reaching adequate fit levels. The RMSEA is still looking amazing under 0 0.05. The CFI is just above 0 0.9, which is adequate. Um, but the TLI is our lone holdout and still hanging out below 0.9. For this model, we would say that it probably has poor to adequate fit. But of course, we can't say which model is better without looking at the AIC and BIC. As you can see, the bifactor ESM has the lowest AIC and BIC of all the models and therefore would be considered to have the best fit. So what does this mean? Um, all the factor structures have poor fit, but the bifactor ESM has the best fit of all of them. All of this begs the question, should we use the adult scared? I actually got many people's opinions on this, and not surprisingly, there was a fair amount of variability in the answers people gave. What I decided on is that if you are using the adult scared for its purpose as a screener for adult DSM-5 anxiety disorders, still makes sense to use it. The DSM-5 was built with a focus on the ability to reliably give a patient the same diagnosis, not necessarily on the etiological aspects of anxiety disorders. So it makes sense that when we try to fit a DSM-5 screener with factor models, we're not pulling great fit statistics. Ultimately, my team and I feel that our study supports the larger literature on the transdiagnostic nature of anxiety disorders. We had to allow a general factor and cross loadings in order to reach just two out of the three conventional cutoffs for fit statistics. These are inherently more transdiagnostic in nature. So where do we go from here? The adult scared is a relatively new measure, so more work needs to be done on group differences. Um, additionally, using item response theory to consider the reliability of the adult scared is an important next step. One future direction that is near and dear to my heart is the creation of a short form. The adult scared is 44 items long. We know that patients are much less likely to complete forms that are that lengthy. Creating a short form will improve its clinical utility. Additionally, we also believe that it will be important to further explore the factor structure of the adult scared using more confirmatory approaches in different samples. And lastly, our data is secondary and we don't have the information to explore criterion validity. This is an incredibly important next step, especially when considering that our sample showed five rather than four subscales. Thank you all so much for listening to my talk today. On the next few slides, I have links to the tools that I used. Um, on this slide in particular, Levon and N-Factors, uh, again, are the two packages that I use in R. Uh, and EFA Tools is actually another R package. The ESM co-generator is the open science tool created by Debeer and Van Ziel to aid in creating M plus code.
Um, again, thank you all so much for listening to my talk. Big thanks to HGAPS and DVSA for allowing me to use your data. And another big thanks to APA and Division 5 for allowing me to present my research. Please don't hesitate to reach out. And if you'd like to access my slides and other resources, please take a look at that QR code.